Well, 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 with open mind, I think this is the club with the biggest expectations ever. When I first came here, people were always talking about we should be doing this, we should be doing that, we should be winning things. But I think the fact that there's so many people actually queuing to get in shows the interest that it's generated. No. Wow. People, pe people are interested, people are coming in, people seem to find out what's going on. views on next season hopefully. Yeah, plenty of, <laughs> plenty of uh, enthusiasm. Everybody's a bit of a buzz about them so let's hope it carries through and we have a good season. That's all we want. <laughs> Hopefully we'll explain a lot of things to people. We've got all the new structure to go through, which a lot of people don't understand. Um, the fixture's obviously out, and it'll be nice to have a chat with Richard and see what his thoughts are for the next season. Yeah, just be interesting to uh, see what you know is planned for this season, how we can compete this year. But it's exciting stuff. Hoping to see some uh, good rugby played on field and see what's going on behind the scenes. introduce our new head coach, you all know him, Richard Marshall. Yeah. And also along tonight, um, I'm, I'm sure everybody's been uh, thinking about the, the new assistant coach and, and certainly the new, the new era of the club, both on and off the field. Um, and I'm really pleased to, um, to announce tonight that, that Richard's assistant has come along, so please put your hands together for Marlon Billy. We, will, um... we all know this season the idea is to try and finish in the top four, but in our league there's three teams I believe are full time. You've come from a full time environment. How do you hope to compensate that when we play teams that are full time and we're part time? How would you hope and try and make it a level playing field? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, there is some uh, discrepancies within the competition in terms of full time and part time, uh, and that's something that we're aware of. Uh, what I'll be doing is making sure that we get the best out of our players uh, for the limited time that we're together. Um, I've just been having a, a chat with Marlon and. And towards the end of the year, uh, I'll probably refer back to Warrington quite a lot. Uh, I won't say we, because we is Halifax, um, but I will refer to Warrington in terms of the, the makeup. Um, on the field, uh, during the training uh, regime, uh, on the field, probably about five or six hours per week uh, time on the training field. We, we're trying to replicate that. You know, I'm not saying the intensity will be the same as a full-time environment, uh, but we're going to try and get the same amount of work done. In, in the three evenings and obviously the Saturday or the Sunday that we train. Uh, that's the way we've planned it and that's what we're looking to do. Uh, so hopefully we'll get the quality within that. That's for us as coaches to set the perimeters of what we're after. Uh, but the quality and intensity in that period of time will be paramount for us. You're taking over from uh, your ex-colleague Carl. And um, of course last season uh, we finished in third place, which on the face of it was very respectable. Um, but in fact, we, we had a lot of inconsistent games during that season. And to be honest, we ought to have walked into second place. Uh, the problem was that in the big games, you know, we just found it very difficult to break down defences and score tries. 
Now, Carl, being an ex-prop forward, tended to concentrate, in my opinion, on signing forwards. Um, and in fairness, we had, a, we had a good pack. But I think it was to the demise of the backs. Um, we've let a lot of good try-scoring backs go in recent times. Shad Royston, Anthony Thackeray, uh, and just recently Ryan Fieldhouse. And we've replaced with some fairly ordinary players, with the exception of one, Scott Morell. Um, I'm just wondering how you might tackle that. Uh, we need more firepower, we need more creativity, and I'm just wondering what you can do before the start of next season. Obviously, I don't want to speak about uh, what's gone on in the past and whether the team played to the level that was expected or not. Um, what we've got is, well, in my opinion, I looked at the, the squad. The squad's obviously in place. Uh, most of the players have, have been signed by the previous regime or, or the board of directors, and I'm more than happy to work with the squad. Uh, so I'll put that on record now. Um, there the possibly will be a couple of additions as we're going on. Um, in terms of the play, the, the way I like to play the game, and I was a forward as well, by the way, probably not the most skillful, and that's why I look like this. Um, but I do, I do like the game to be played fluent, uh, with vision and passion. And obviously, you know, if if, if you look at, at Warrington, I'm not going to be trying to replicate that by any means. But there's some areas of the game that that I enjoy to coach with Warrington, and that would be the speed and the expanse and being able to attack from anywhere on the field. I think when you're um, when you're a coach or a player, when you're least expecting the team to attack, is actually the best time to attack. Uh, whether that be off kick returns or whatever, um, that will be something that I'll be trying to trying to bring in. Uh, we won't always get that right, by the way, and and we're going to take time to develop the team and the squad, um, and that time and players knowing the roles and what is expected of them. Um, I'm pretty much down the line of um, I wouldn't play a half back in the front row. Don't get me wrong. But I'd like at some point the half back to understand what happens within the front row. I think the empathy within the team actually develops each each player as well. Um, I did an interview last week and I mentioned a couple of the Warrington juniors, Ben Curry, who, who uh, in my opinion is a really good back rower. Now when I was coaching him in the 20s, I played him at standoff centre, he played in the back row. I think it was only hooker, he, he didn't play in. And that's development of a player. Now I understand someone like uh, Scott Morell or the more experienced players, they see fit and, and they're, they're a piece in the jigsaw whether that be halfback or hooker. But I do like to um, to make sure players develop an, an all-round skill set. Uh, that would be where I'd be looking to play. Uh, the game plan will change on, on, a, on a weekly basis on our strengths, on what we've done well previous week, but also on the opposition and big into me analysis as well. A good example um, of what you discussed is probably Casper Tigers. And you look at the situation with Cass um, and how they were playing the previous years. And, and I'd sort of look at Richard, uh, probably a bit of a, a bench mark for his Daryl Powell. But Daryl Powell has got a totally different approach to the game. Um, you know, he's got a, an expansive game. And I think obviously that's something that Richard's trying to bring. I think from a, from a club's point of view, um, the board of directors have looked at coaches and as well on the coaching team. We've got a winger. <laughs> So Marlon's going to put something in there. We've also got Scott Morell, and uh, he's than me, yeah, he's the biggest winner I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. It looks like that winger played prop as well. Um, so th there's, there's a, a wide scope on there, and I think it's you know there's been a lot of uh, a lot of decisions discussed and a lot of thought gone into to how the coaching staff's been put together. And you know we certainly as a board of directors have got massive faith in Richard, and we we hope that you two have this year uh, as well. You, you mentioned speed, and you've just mentioned Cass. Does the speed of the play of the ball in the championship concern you? Because it's far, far slower than what you're probably used to watching in Super League. In fact, some weeks it can be terribly slow, and I think that will affect the way you can attack teams. Yeah, it's a good question, and it's a fair observation. Uh, obviously, the, the, the refereeing standards uh, are, are different as well. I'm not saying they're perfect in Super League, by the way, far from it, but. Um, yeah, it would be something that we'd look at. Uh, now, me as a coach, as soon as you're saying that, I'm thinking, how can we counteract that that slowness at the play of the ball? Well, I'm thinking, let's play fast you know, in terms of body position, getting out of, of of the tacklers, of the defenders, and disadvantaging them. Um, that's five pound fine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
So yeah, so the play the ball, yeah, the recognition. Now, we, we want to develop uh, players that can play and recognise what's happened before. A lot of the tries are scored off quick play the balls or disadvantaged defenders. We'll be trying to do that offensively. Uh, but defensively, we'll, we'll be doing that. We'll be trying to slow the, slow the rook down. We, we know how important that is. Um, you know, we're going to be doing some wrestle sessions. I'm not big into wrestle, uh, don't get me wrong, and, and three or four men in. What, my, what I like is strong contact uh, and, and two man tackles, uh, or even one. You know, why put two in when one can do the job? Uh, we'll be looking to work on tackle technique individually first, because uh, that means obviously your line set. Uh, there is other teams in the competition that put three, four, five defenders in, and that's fine. Uh, my philosophy is, is, is win the initial contact with hit, hit and stick. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll, we'll we'll be working on that. I think just to just to add um, what Neil mentioned about uh, replacement players, um, we did advertise that there'll be a, a new signing here tonight, but unfortunately um, his wife is seven months pregnant and she collapsed today, so he, he couldn't make it. But um, we would like to announce, and uh, obviously. It's, Every club's the same. It's probably not a, a massive surprise, but it's certainly a massive signing for us, and that's the, the signing of winger Alex Brown, who will be with us for um, next season. So when you're talking about class players and Super League level players, you look at Alex, and he's got the pace, he's got the flair, etc. So um, I'm sure you well, you all should be pleased about that signing. Richard, uh, just taking you back a couple of points, uh, you said it was going to take a bit of time to get up to speed with the players, etc. Looking at the fixture list that's just been announced. We ain't got a lot of time. <laughs> the first six, seven rounds are pretty intensive, uh, all the top teams. So, uh, how, how do you combat that? Yeah, um, obviously the fixtures have, have come out and uh, going up to to Whitehaven, uh, first game away. Uh, there's two ways you can look at that. You can you can go well, off. You know, it's wide saving away. We've got to play them sometime, or you can sulk and, and want to buy the home game first. I'm probably of, of the first mould where we're going to play everybody anyway. You know, uh, it, it would be nice to go to wide saving and get a result, and then obviously play Lee here as well. Um, second game, and yeah, it's it's you know, yeah, I'm not too concerned. I'm not too concerned. I think um, we'll we'll have the play. We'll have a real good pre-season. We'll do our best in pre-season in terms of preparing the players. Um, Easter's a tricky period if I'm being honest I think Easter looks like it could be a tricky period for us and, uh, and probably will test part-time teams more than the full-time teams I think uh, you know your Bradford and London will probably be in a position to rotate a couple of players um, whether Bradford do that against us or not I'm, I'm not quite sure probably not um, but yeah we, we'll have to manage our squad and make sure that everybody it, 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 who takes the field is fit enough to play and obviously that, that that Easter period as well, um, maybe maybe look to bring in a couple of loan signings. We'll see. Richard, we've got some um, Aussies coming on board this year. Um, what's your expectation in terms of their fitness when they arrive? Have you been in contact? Uh, I've only saw the the highlights over the internet and, and exchanged a couple of emails. Um, I'm looking forward to working with the uh, with the three guys coming over. Um, obviously, they were in place. Uh, before I signed, um, that said, like I said earlier, you know that's just the way it is, and I'm happy to work with the squad that we've assembled. Um, there is some challenges when you when you work overseas and you, and you leave your friends and your families and, uh, and and you move to a different country. So you know, I'm making sure that everything off the field is is fine for them players because that's important. It's not just the rugby; it's, it's what happens outside of that uh, and the influences and the people that they, that they surround themselves by. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them. You know, I'm looking forward. Uh, player of the year, players player of the year. So there's some good raps there for them. Um, I had a I had a chat with Simon Griggs, who knows a couple of the players who play in that competition, and uh, and I spoke uh, very highly of them. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. You know, you do your homework on players, regardless. I'm probably doing it post signing as opposed to pre. Um, but all the all the feedback and vibes I'm getting are, are really positive. So hopefully they'll uh, add a, a new dimension to us. Welcome aboard. Thank you all the best. So, you know, this season's a really good season. Um, what I'd just like to know is obviously Bradford is a full time team. They've now come out and said that they've already started their pre season. Um, I'm pretty confident that we're going to go straight back up into the, the Super League. I'm just wondering are you concerned that obviously they've got, they're saying now they've got the edge 
over everybody in the championship because they've already started. Um, one of their signings from Australia has come out and said, I can't wait, I've come over here and I've hit the ground running and it's fantastic. How can we answer that? Um, that's music to my ears then. Um, <laughs> uh, because obviously, uh, when you set, set yourself up on a, on a pedestal uh, for everybody else to knock, knock, knock down, um, I won't be getting carried away in what we're doing. I think uh, we're coming back at the right time. We've obviously got some players uh, playing international football as well. Um, I'm confident in the period between when we start on the 6th of November uh, to just before Christmas, the six week block, we're going to get a lot of work done. Um, I'm not too concerned about Bradford or Lee or, or London or Featherstone. Uh, uh, th th this is my concern: is Halifax and getting the best out of this uh, this this band of players. I'm sure you wouldn't expect me to say anything differently. Um, but that's you know, hand on heart, that's that's what I'm about, and that's what I'm looking forward to do. Uh, I've contacted most of the players, uh, and I'm getting the same feeling about Halifax, about coming to training, coming to work here in pre-season. Uh, there's not one player I've spoke to who isn't excited uh, to be coming back on board. Um, so that's a positive. We know, we, we, know, we know they're coming for the right reasons and, and to learn and to develop. Uh, and as am I as well, you know, it's about uh, me developing as a head coach as well. I, I've coached uh, in, in, in Super League, obviously, as a, as, a, as a first team coach and I've, I've coached uh, Warrington under 20s as a head coach. So this is about me as well learning. <laughs> Um, I probably won't always get it right. You know, there might be some times where we go through tough periods, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty strong character, resolute, and I know what, uh, what I want to do. I think just to add to that, with uh, you talk about fitness levels and how the you know the two or three full-time teams. Um, I think you know we talked about players, but from my point of view, after speaking to a few people, a key signing is also uh, Andy Elliott from from Warrington, who's coming in as a, a strength and conditioner. Um, but what can you tell us, you know, the fans about uh, about Andy Rich? Yeah, and he was a sports scientist at Warrington. Uh, the, the game's changed certainly since I uh, played at Thrum Hall all them years ago um, to um, we train and have a few pints afterwards and then get a kebab on the way home. <laughs> and that, I didn't do that really. That's what the that's what some of the guys did. I, I didn't do that. I was on the M62. Um, but yeah, the game's moved on uh, so much now in terms of sports science, and probably our challenge will be. Not what we do while we're here, I can cover that, I'm really confident in what we're going to deliver. It's what the players do away from here, uh, you know, whether that be diet-wise, nutrition, alcohol, whatever it may be, uh, that's something that we need to take care of. Um, Andy, Andy is, is very good at his sports science, his nutrition, his supplements, and, um, and if he can get the, uh, the buy-in from the players and sell his, sell his product, which is him and his, and his conditioning, uh, and I'll back that up and, and if he doesn't get it right I've got Marlon to back that up as well um, so yeah so it, it's important what they do away from the club uh, not just not just yeah. while they're here training Hello Richard welcome back to Halifax <laughs> when the um, vacancy for the coach was announced that we're looking for a new coach and we've got a lot of friends who've watched the, the club a long time and all, all kinds of names were mentioned Johnny Keir Noble um, the guy that was at St Anne's can't remember his name Mill Ward so all these names were mentioned, and we were talking for a couple of weeks, and you know, he'll be good, we don't want him, no one, whatever else. The one thing that came across is that when your name was mentioned, everyone went, hmm. Now that's a bit of a strange one. No one said, oh no, we don't want him. Everyone went, hmm. So is that then been really clever? What I'd like to know is, what did you do on your interview to enable you to get that job above all those names? I don't quite know how to answer that one. <laughs> um, Had a good CV. Listen, all, all I can um, vouch for is, 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 is my development at Warrington, you know, and, and what I've worked hard to accomplish there uh, with the junior players, with the senior players, working with internationals on a daily basis and building their relationships. Uh, I hope to replicate that here. Uh, I know the circumstances and and, and the situations are different, uh, but the outcome I'm hoping will be the same in terms of quality. Um, as I said earlier, we might not always get it right, but I'll be trying. Uh, I've already spent the last two weeks over in Halifax looking for venues and training and, and making sure everything's right and proper and fit for this squad. Um, you know, 
there's been some issues in the past with training uh, and facilities and it is such an important area that, that uh, that's key to success and we're not far off with that now we're, uh, we're pretty far down the way um, I've had a great mentor in Tony Smith uh, Tony's you know he's He's a really good friend, great coach, uh, probably you know, and probably the coach that I really enjoyed playing for. Uh, and John Pillarby, by the way, as well. I enjoyed playing for John. He was a tough taskmaster. Master Tony is slightly different, um, but he, he he's constantly challenging you, uh, constantly <coughs> asking questions. Why are you delivering this? Who are you delivering that to? What are you doing it for? And what that makes you do is account accountable and be accountable for your actions and your decisions. And, uh, and give us free reign, really, uh, myself and Willie, in terms of coaching the team, with him overseeing it, obviously, and picking the team. So I think I've served my apprenticeship. I'm ready to be a head coach, uh, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm fresh. I'm looking forward to the challenge, and it's one that I'm, I'm looking forward to and ready for. <laughs> I'll leave that one. Uh, Richard, uh, you, you signed a, a hooker from Warrington. Uh, I wonder what you could tell us about him because you probably noticed that we already have three hookers here. <laughs> the uh, yeah, it's, it, obviously it's Ryan is someone who I've worked with at Warrington and I've seen him progress through the, through the junior ranks and I know his threats and his abilities. Um, uh, I'm not this isn't disrespectful or doing a disservice to the hookers or the players that are here. I just knew that Ryan's quality. Um, so you know, I'm, I'm looking to back him uh, in, in bringing him here. Uh, I've worked with Keith Holden as well at Warrington. Keith's a good player. Don't get me wrong. So we want competition. I think it's a, a pivotal position. Uh, it's up there in terms of I, I think fullbacks, in my opinion, the best position on the field. Uh, you know, and, and, and aligning with that, you've got your hooker and your halfback. Um, so. Yeah, it, it was, it's an interesting one. It's my first signing uh, for the club, although I've worked with a lot of the players who are, who are already contracted here. Uh, I think he'll offer us something, uh, and I think I hope he brings the best out in other people. He's not guaranteed to start, uh, as in anyone within the squad. Everybody's got to work hard, and uh, no one's guaranteed. We've got a couple, or hopefully a couple of trial games over in January. We'll have a good look at these players, and we'll pick uh, which, which team we see fit. Rich, I think we're aware um, of your coaching credentials. Perhaps Marlon can just give us a bit of his background. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's big. <laughs> Quick round of applause for Marlon, please. <laughs> and, uh, if, uh, if Marlon says it's Friday, it's Friday, I think. <laughs> um, I started with, uh, obviously, I finished my playing career at Sweden, um, really. Um, and I've worked under Steve McCormack. Um, he just, he just, he's, a, he's a top coach and you learn things, don't you? You pick things up. I worked with Ian Watson, obviously. Uh, got a good relationship with him. And I just sort of like, just learned from different coaches to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm a back and I like to play. I like the, the back line to get on the ball, but obviously I appreciate what the forwards do. So it's a pretty balanced game. I mean, um, we'll go forward real well. Here, I think we've got. <laughs> we've got a really good pack and I think we've got a really exciting back line as well so I think we're going to be dangerous all over the pitch I think one added value to Marlon is obviously we're a championship club at the moment and, and the experience and knowledge that Marlon's got at the championship is, is certainly something that will, I'm sure will help Richard moving forward um, you know, we, we, we watch championship week in week out and, and, and Richard have, you know, have seen a lot of that but certainly the blend we've got at the club and no addition now from an outside point of view from the championship you know, we've got to remember next year we're a championship club and we want to strive to, to win that championship so the more people we've got on board with knowledge uh, you know, from the past and so moving forward, I'm sure it's going to help us as a club.